This is the same paper that uh, generated many other uh, works. So essentially you have a system like this, you have a double integrator and you have this guy here. You see there is something that makes the system asymptotically stable if this were not there, right? But then there is this extra nonlinearity that you don't know what to do with it. Um, so somehow you want to, the effect of this nonlinearity, you want to cancel it with, with the, uh, by designing a control input in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the linear uh, dynamics down there, right? Um, so what, what you want to do is um, first design, well, I will skip this. Uh, what you want to do is to um, design you to stabilize Xi, but not only, you want to stabilize Xi, but also you want to uh, add uh, an extra feedback to take care of of these of these terms here okay so according to the to the theorem I showed you what what you do is the following first if this is just double integrator you first uh, use um, a feedback to put the poles of the of your linear system in the right place so let's say we we choose these control gains to to make the the system down here asymptotically stable and you add an extra input, as I said, to take care of, this, of these guys here, okay? So um, this is the matrix that we saw before uh, this. So here A is, is just a zero, what is it? Zero, one, zero, zero, right? And this, this guy here is A minus BK, yeah? which I, I made it Horwitz. Then there is the extra input and uh, my, my Lyapunov function that I'm going to use to, to figure out this input is going to be V, which is a Lyapunov function for the system uh, x dot equals f0, which in this case is just x dot equals minus x cube. So V equal x square will do, right? Because with, uh, with that, you get V dot less or equal than, uh, well, actually equals to minus x cube. Right. If I consider v dot just to be the partial of v times f zero, and um, and what else? And then I have this guy here that will uh, generate uh, this one, and then I can figure out what I have to put in this input to take care of the of the extra nonlinearities that are sitting there in my in my system, right? And uh, yeah, so I just do that computation. I take the derivative, this is uh, minus q, and uh, this is c, and uh, what else? Here I have xi, here I have xi, and v I can choose it, so I will just choose it to match exactly that, yeah, with a negative sign, and uh, we'll take care of those nonlinearities. I will add uh, a minus y here, to add uh, extra dissipation if I want, and uh, then what will I obtain? I will obtain this. If I want to continue, maybe there is something that I, after this system, there is, I will go and interconnect it with something else. So let's just say, for the purpose of, of continuing think about passivity interconnections and so on, let's just invent a new input that I'm going to put in my system. I, so I close the loop, but then I add a, a new input. Um, as you can see, I have passivity from this new input to the, to the output Y, because I have all these negative terms here. So I have actually strict passivity with respect to the state. Yeah? I have this negative term in Xi, and I have this uh, negative term in, uh, in, in X. So that gives me strict passivity with respect to the state. And by adding this minus y here, I have a y square in, the, in, the, in this inequality, which gives me also, um, so this is, this is integral of y square. Uh, it gives me also output strict passivity. So you see with this, this controller, I, inf I enforced uh, really the, the, the passivity of the, uh, of the system.
So this is this is the picture I have. Uh, um, I have this this system that I'm interconnecting with uh, this one here. This system has as an out, as output uh, this. So this is an output that I define, and I use that output to to make the passive interconnection. So I'm going to use that output to inject it into this block, and I'm going to define the, this input v exactly as being that output. That's, that's exactly what I just did, right? I said my, my new input V is defined by this guy here, okay? So that's, that's this. Then I take the output uh, Y and uh, then it goes back into, into here. So as you see, yeah, it's, it's for a particular class of systems, but uh, yeah, often with, with um, mechanical systems and such, you can, you can uh, do that. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it looks like that because, because you have, so but again, but essentially you, so uh, think of this as, uh, imagine you, 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 I mean, you, you will see, you will give a lecture on adaptive control. So it, it, suppose you, you do your control knowing all the parameters of the system, and you know how to do that. And so you end up with, uh, with this equation, x dot equals f0, right? So that's the case in which you know the parameters. And then you don't know the parameters, so a bunch of extra things appear. Well, you can just take care of them with, with, a, with, a, with this uh, feedback passivation term. Yeah, that, that's, uh, so this cascade story is that I, I skipped it because we don't have time, but uh, uh, Kokotovic was, was uh, I mean, this triggered all the study about cascaded systems. Uh, um, and as you can see also, the, this feedback passivation is exactly at the basis of feedback, of uh, backstepping, right? So, I mean, this paper really is, is at the basis of a lot of things. Um, so the, the, the cascades thing is that, you could you could imagine that if if you have this system that is linear that is perturbing your your nonlinear system, uh, an intuition would say, okay, I, I will just stabilize this guy, and once this is not there, I have a, a, a nonlinear system that is stable, so everything should be okay. So they they remark that no, it's it's not like that in nonlinear system because if uh, if you like say I'm going to stabilize it like real fast. Well, real fast for this system may also mean that, that you have a peaking in the, so in the transient you have a huge peak. And then, yeah, you stabilize it in, like in one second, yeah, the XI is already very small. But this, this peak goes to, to certain levels, and if, if you inject more and more damping to, to stabilize it faster and faster, what you will end up with is that the, uh, your system essentially will, will, will explode. The solution to the, to the system up here is given by this equation. There shouldn't be x1, it's just x. Uh, so this is the solution to the system. And, and as you can see here, you have a bunch of terms with a minus one there. So at certain moment, all that cancels out. You are dividing by zero and, and the solution explodes. So they were just remarking that uh, yeah, for these kind of systems, in, in, it's in cascade because this guy is completely decoupled. There is no dependence on X. If you just stabilize it with a with a with certain feedback, you make uh, you, you, not only you will not be achieving stabilization also of also of X, but you will actually actually make it uh, explode in finite time. So that's not what you should do. So you so yeah so they figured out okay so if this if the if the extra nonlinearities that are sitting there have certain structure, I can figure out how to inject something some extra input here, in order to take care of those of those. Uh, but but yeah there there is there are these stru structural properties right so uh, you have to define certain output from the, your nonlinear system, and then you have to have that xi here. Uh, appears in the nonlinearities in your system, but it doesn't appear in just in any arbitrary manner. It, uh, it appears uh, like this, remember? So 
uh, you have to have you have to be able to factor out of your nonlinearities this this uh, y, which happens to be exactly c times sine. So uh, and in this case, well, that that output is is this. Yeah. So, um, but then again, it's it's really about choosing the right output in in your system to define this passivity property from from the right output. And if you have these structural properties, you will be able to to uh, to do things. Um, okay, I'll try to do this uh, uh, last part of the uh, of the lecture uh, on. A specific kind of passivity based control that uh, is called energy shaping plus dumping injection. You have probably heard of this. Um, yeah. So, this, this uh, method was originally uh, proposed by a paper in 81, really long ago. That was also a very uh, revolutionary paper because, uh, so, 80s is, is, you know, I mean, it's really a long time ago. Uh, basically, only Japanese had robots in factories and, and such. So, uh, in, back in, in, in those days, in, in notably, notably in, in uh, chain um, production of cars, right? So, uh, basically, in those times, there was very little known about nonlinear systems. So, they figured out how to control robots, robot manipulators, nonlinear systems, using this method that they called energy shaping. And, and it, it consists in, uh, I was saying in the beginning, uh, when you have a passive system, you have this energy balance equation. So what they figured out is, if I want to bring my pendulum to, to a desired position, all I have to do is manipulate the, the potential energy to bring the minimum of the, of the potential energy to that position. And, and, and my, if, my control, if through my control I am able to do that, I will be able to stabilize any equilibrium with, uh, at, at that position. If on top I add damping, then I will also be able to stabilize it asymptotically, right? Using, again, the passivity uh, notions. So uh, just to illustrate this, this method, uh, yeah, so you can also uh, read about it in, uh, in our book uh, with uh, Romeo Ortega uh, in, in 98. But yeah, you know that this, this method it goes back to, this, to these guys. Um, so if I illustrate the, this method with the, with the pendulum, what the situation we have is the following. Uh, this is the potential energy, the uh, total energy of the pendulum, right? So kinetic energy and potential energy. And potential energy looks like this, right? So 1 minus mgl cosine. So it's that curve. As you can see, this energy has a bunch of minima. So the we are thinking that Q is in R, okay? Don't, don't think minus p, minus, two pi, uh, minus pi pi, but R. So uh, if we think of Q in, in all variables in R, then it has a bunch of minima at uh, n, uh, two, 2 pi n, right? Uh, well, if you want to stabilize your pendulum at a specific point, you don't want all these minima. You want to first to have only uh, one minimum, which is your equilibrium, and you want it to be global. So meaning that your, your, your potential energy should be, look more like a parabola or something. So what you want to do is to manipulate this, this potential energy. And you want to do that because, um, well, uh, conserving the passivity properties and such. So the first thing to remark is that the pendulum from, from the inputs u to the uh, velocities, so as we already saw, torques to velocities, is a passive map, right? So if you take this function, the derivative will give you just the product of u times q dot if there is no friction. So it's a passive map, right? It, in the other notation, it satisfies this. So uh, in order to change the potential energy, the first thing you do is maybe um, add a, a line uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the expression of the potential energy and also uh, an offset, OK? So first, you want to, to put the minimum of your potential energy. You want to put it at, uh, at two stars somewhere. And if you add a line, then your potential energy now you will look like this. So that's, that would be 1 minus uh, mgl plus an offset plus, uh, plus, this, uh, plus this line, right? So it will look like that. I still have uh, several minima, right? 
but my system is still passive. All I did was just basically add this, this offset and this, uh, this line here. And uh, now my system will still be passive from a new input that I'm going to call UFB for U feedback. So there is a feed forward and there is a feedback. So the feed forward is just shifting the, the, the minimal of the potential energy to, to the gravitational vector to uh, evaluate it at, uh, at Q star. Okay. Yeah, so that this system is passive. You can see it easily by just taking the derivative of the new Lyapunov function, the new storage function. The kinetic energy plus the potential energy of the pendulum plus the modifications I added. So, of course, this function is zero at q equal to q equal to q star, right? So these guy, two guys will eliminate, uh, will cancel out if q is equal to q star. Q tilde I'm defining as uh, the difference. I guess it was yeah, it was somewhere uh, in the other slides. Q Q tilde is is the difference between uh, q. Oh, it's here. Um, so this will also go away, and so it has it has a singular point at q uh, tilde equal to zero, and actually that singular point is is zero. So it's it's this. If I take the de the derivative of that, uh, yeah, as you can see, this guy goes away with this because it's multiplied there. This is one. This goes away with that, and we only have left this this guy here. So all I did so far is manipulate the potential energy, right? Now what I want to do is, um, I don't want the potential energy to look like that. I said I wanted it to be a, a minimum that is global, meaning that it is, this point is smaller than any other point of the, of the function, in the image of the function. And also it has to be the only one, okay? Global and unique is not the same thing. Yeah, I, I could have a function that uh, does, uh, I don't know, it goes like this and then flat and then like that. So all these are global minima, right? So what I want is something more like what I have in this picture. And the way I, to achieve that is to add uh, to what I already put in, in my function, I am going to add a parabola. So if you add a parabola to that, basically now the, 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 the thing that was going like that, now it will look like uh, this, this blue curve there. And, uh, but this blue curve uh, for a certain value of Kp will look like this. And you can see there is another minimum there, okay? So there is one minimum there and there is one minimum there. So this minimum is global, but there is, it's not the only minimum in my function, there is also, also this one. So eventually my system could go and, uh, and, and get stuck there. So I don't want that. So I increase my KP to make my function rather look like this, okay? So now I'm sure that I have a, a unique minimum. Once I have done that uh, modification to my potential energy, uh, I do that through the uh, controller, so the controller essentially will carry all these extra terms that I need to modify the potential energy, and uh, all that will cancel away, so uh, we'll have this guy cancelled with, uh, well, it's, it comes from, from, from this, so it cancels with this. This one comes from the controller, so it will cancel out with this one, okay, so it's multiplied by Q dot here, and, uh, and this one, comes from the uh, parabola that I added to my potential energy. That means that in my controller I should put uh, I should put this gain here. And it's a very simple controller for a nonlinear system, right? It's just a proportional feedback plus a uh, constant essentially to to and cancellation of the nonlinear well uh, plus this compensation of the gravity at the equilibrium. With doing that, with doing this reshaping of the potential energy, what I'm doing is that I'm rendering passive. So I, in the beginning, I had a passive system. Adding this offset only modify the minimum of the potential energy, but the, the system is still passive. And uh, then I added this, this feedback here. So it's this um, proportional term. It's a feedback of Q dot if I pass it through an integral. So an integrator is a passive system, right? It's the simplest passive system you can think about. So x dot equals u, or let me write actually y dot equals u, v equals y square. That means that v dot is equal to y times u. Passive system. An integrator is a passive system. So I have a passive system interconnected with a passive system in closed loop I will have a passive system. 
okay, which is expressed down there. And uh, to make the, uh, the new minimum, to make it global, what I need is to, as illustrated in this figure, I, I need kp. So this is for a certain value of kp rather small, and the red one is for a, an, an increased value of kp. So the, actually the condition comes to kp should be larger than the partial derivative of the gravity uh, forces vector. And that will ensure me actually that the second derivative of v is, is positive, and that will ensure me that my, my function is strictly convex in, in, uh, in q tilde. Okay. This is only sufficient, it's not necessary. It doesn't have to be a parabola, it could be also a function that is a parabola only locally, but then it grows linearly. And then this condition will not hold, but for the purpose of energy shaping and all that, it, that still works. And then, um, yeah, so, all, so far what I have accomplished is I started with a passive system, modified the, the minimum. Applying this gain, I made sure that the minimum is global and unique. I still have a passive system there from, from every time I add a new input and uh, towards the, the same output Q dot. And uh, remember that theorem of uh, Berns Isidori uh, Williams. He was saying that if I have a passive system and I have that detectability assumption satisfied, all I have to do is to interconnect an extra feedback here, which is basically a function of the output of, with respect to which the system is passive. And this function here should be basically a nonlinearity living in the first third quadrant. Okay. So if I inject that, uh, I will inject dissipativity in my system and I will make the whole thing output strictly passive. So this block will be input strictly passive, but the whole block here will be output strictly passive. And um, yeah, so the, the proof of, of this proposition that you have, we now we have with this controller global asymptotic stability, uh, can be done using this uh, theorem that I show you, or uh, Barbashin Krasovsky, which probably you know wrongly as Lassalle's uh, theorem, uh, but it was uh, actually uh, originally proposed by some Russian guys several years before Lassalle. Um, and the controller is, is, is right here. So it's uh, what I just explained uh, uh, is, is the following. First, I added this, right, to, to change the, the, the um, Equal the uh, minimum of the potential energy, then we added this to make it global for sufficiently Kp, large, uh, sufficiently large Kp, and then this guy to, to add damping, right? So we call this damping injection, and with this, these two terms, we call them energy shaping terms. And uh, the proof is very simple. You just take as Lyapunov function the, the, the modified energy uh, uh, of, the, of the system. In this case, we only modify the potential energy. The derivative of all that is uh, is going to be uh, it's going to be this right? So you can see uh, in UDI you just want to inject damping so that you get uh, you get a quadratic term. I hope it is there somewhere. Uh, yeah, here uh, you get a quadratic term in uh, in the output. Yeah, so this is the proof using Burns Isidori Williams. It says that all I have to do is inject this guy. That will give me uh, V dot with this. It will give me minus KB Q dot square. And then um, I have to check whether uh, Q dot implies that Q goes to zero. In, the, in this case, actually, uh, if I write q dot equal to, uh, equal to zero, that will go away. That uh, and I have this equal to zero, and uh, the only solution of this equation is is q e q equal to q star, and it is the only solution once again due to the uh, condition that I'm imposing on on k p. So it has to do with making the the only minimum to be uh, to be k star. You can do the same proof using LaSalle, again, so that you can write the system, or, or Barbashin Krasovsky. You write the system in this form, go here, set x2 equal to zero, and see that the only solution that uh, contained in this set is the origin, right? So 
and the nice thing about this is that you have output strict passivity. So if you add another input here, you will have, instead of, in place of this, you will have the same input multiplied by, by Q dot. So you could continue carrying on with uh, more uh, things. Um, let me just quickly show you what happens when you want to stabilize the system again here. But uh, remember, we, in the controller, we were adding this term. This, it's the compensation of the gravity at, uh, the, at Q star. So this is constant. This is just a constant. Suppose you don't know that constant. So you want to estimate this constant. You put an estimate of the constant. And then you want to figure out, how do I update this constant? Yeah. So it's typically what you do in adaptive control that you haven't seen that yet. But, uh, in this case, it's just integral action, and it comes back to to the method of uh, of, of uh, Kokotovich. Um, what we want to do is to first apply the the control that we already know that works when we know the constant. And what we do next is we add and subtract that constant because we actually cannot put it there. So uh, we are actually going to apply this controller. Okay. So we are going to use an estimate of the of that constant. And we add and subtract the, the, real, the real thing, okay? So, but this is the control we're applying. This controller can be written like this. So the one that we already know how that it works, it gives in passivity, etc. plus the difference between uh, what I'm putting in and the real thing that I don't know, okay? So that again is just, uh, well, this is constant and this is, this is uh, g hat. So I'm going to call that Xi. So, uh, yeah, all this to say that the, the class of systems that fit this, uh, in this paper of uh, Kokotovic is not that restrictive, actually. Um, for instance, here, we have exactly that, that system. So here we have this. If, this, is, this is the pendulum equation. In closed loop, you can see here the... Uh, KPQ tilde term, right? This is the KD uh, Q term, Q dot term. And this is the uh, gravity, comp this is the gravity, this is just G of Q. And this is the compensation, the ideal compensation that I don't have. And uh, when I apply the, 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 the control with the estimate of the compensation, I will have this, these equations. So I have Xi times a non-linearity, which in this case is just this constant vector, right? Um, and here we have this F0, remember, that has to be gas. But I know that it is gas because I know how to do things when, when I know the, the gravity compensation. So I say, well, what, how do I estimate uh, G? Well, esti figuring out what to put in G dot it comes to figuring out what I put in uh, Xi, right? So I basically just go ahead and, and write uh, this equation, which is an extra integrated. I, and uh, these guys would tell me, well, just put that. Well, I, I, I can't really because, uh, because, because what? Because that would involve uh, using psi in the feedback. If I wanted to put this term in, in this equation, it would involve using what I don't know. So I will just not put that, I will go ahead and test my chances with just the other part that takes care of the uh, effect of this extra term that I have in my equation and see what happens. So uh, we didn't see that here, but uh, there is a simple way to figure out a Lyapunov function for, for this guy. And uh, using that Lyapunov function, you can establish passivity now, not, not only with respect to the velocities, but actually to, to this output which is essentially a small constant times positions plus velocities. So it's just another passive map, okay? And uh, when you apply that, you end up with this controller. So the controller you already knew how to, how to that uses uh, gravity compensation, but in the, instead of gravity compensation, you use an estimate of it, and in, in place of the estimate, you put this guy, which comes really from, from the method of, uh, of uh, Kokotovich, which uh, 
tells you, well, take the output of your system. Uh, if that output is multiplying this extra nonlinearity that you want to get rid of, well, just put that into your new feedback. And uh, that will take care of, of this extra thing that you have in there. So you can see that by taking the derivative of this Lyapunov function with one half of uh, xi squared, you will see that you get this guy and uh, this guy that comes from, uh, from your uh, equation here, right? So this and this go away, and then you get your, um, your system. And uh, yeah, it all comes just to uh, integral action. So this is what we had when we know the gravity term. If we don't know the gravity term, this passivity-based control is saying, well, just take this output, because the system is passive also with respect to this output, not just with respect to Q dot. Take that output, pass it through an integrator, and then you will still be, you will still be fine. And it all boils down to a PID, PID control. So, uh, so, you can see, so PID control for robot manipulators is, is another passivity-based uh, controller. These are some references in case you want to, to know more about uh, all this. Okay, thank you.